Hello, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and today I am joined by Rachel Hanna. Welcome, Rachel. How are you doing? Hi, yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm very well. How are you? Good, thanks. I am so excited to have you here. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Rachel is an incredible nature photographer, and today we have some very exciting things in store for you all with Lightroom and exploring some of her beautiful images. But first, I want to give a warm welcome to all of you who are joining us and watching in. Welcome, and thank you for being here with us. Do, do not forget to subscribe to our Adobe Live YouTube channel, where you can join in and watch all all of our past and future streams as well as join in on the Adobe Live community and have some fun with all of us over here. Welcome all of you into the chat as well. Thank you also for being here with us. And if any of you want to join in today on the chat, feel free to pop in there to ask Rachel and myself any questions. So Rachel, I will just bounce it over to you so you can give us a little <clears throat> intro. Yeah, okay. So um, yeah, I'm Rachel. Um, I'll just head over to my Instagram feed. Um, so I'm predominantly a, an outdoor um, and wildlife photographer. Um, I've got a real passion for wildlife conservation and nature and how good it makes you feel. Um, and I started to, I picked up a camera about six years ago um, and I haven't put it down since. Um, I absolutely love going out um, exploring um, all around the UK taking photographs of anything really <laughs> but um predominantly um yeah nature and wildlife I absolutely love it it's my happy place I can spend hours taking photographs of uh, wildlife um that I see um and yeah um I, it's just I absolutely love it so I'm, I'm really happy to be on this stream today and um, hopefully help people um edit some of their photographs using some um tools in Lightroom so I use a healing tool and masking tool a lot in my photographs um, to sort of create a cinematic look. So hopefully today people can um, learn a bit from it and then apply it to some of their photographs as well. Awesome. Yeah, I love your work. I love the the mood you create through your editing and um, the puffin, of course, my absolute oh, favorite. Puffin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So great. Oh, I love puffins. Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I took a trip to Skoma Island um, in June. So um, yeah, it was absolutely it was amazing. It, they were in the breeding season. So they were just running past your feet. Oh, um, that's so cool. I was able to get some really good photographs. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, um, that's me. Um, and then I will go into Lightroom. So I predominantly use Lightroom Mobile. I don't use Lightroom Classic at all because I've always been in the uh, mindset of, right, I'll take a photo, I'll upload it to my phone, and then I edit it on my phone. Um, and that's just my workflow. That's just how I've worked for years. So I've kind of just stuck at that, really. So yeah, um, I'm, I've um, put some photographs together here in uh, healing um, and masking. So well, yeah, I'll just go through them if, if that's okay. That sounds great. And um, we have a question from YouTube for you. Uh, and maybe this is, I don't know if this is something you want to answer right away or get into, but um, mm -hmm. Lewis asks, how can I make sure my raw photos from my iPhone are always high res when working in Lightroom? Um, that's a good question. Um, I well to be honest I just I use a I haven't got it with me actually I should have brought it down um but I've got um, an SD card reader so I just plug um that into the, my phone um it's a lightning connector just get my SD card put it into the connector put it into my phone and upload it straight into Lightroom mobile um and it the raw image is there it doesn't it doesn't um send over jpeg it sends over the raw file so then when I when I export um a photograph I just make sure that my settings um, are set to like 100% or something, and then just upload and um, export it, sorry, as a large. And that keeps it basically. Just making Great. sure um, that your settings in the in Lightroom itself are high, you know, 80% to 100%. Um, okay. Yeah, that's how I do it. Good to know. Cool. Okay, so I was gonna start off with healing. And then I'll go through masking. I was also going to touch on Adobe Express because I've started to use, um, started to create, sorry, a load of reels on Instagram recently. Of, um, because obviously the algorithm on Instagram is changing all the time. 
So I wanted to start using reels and promoting my work through reels. So to create um, covers for the reels, I use um, Adobe Express. So oh, cool. at, at the end of this stream, um, I'll just go through how I do that quickly. Um, and yeah, so. That would be great because I feel like that's something myself included and so many people struggle with of how to make the perfect cover photo and how much text do you want to have, like all these little things. So I'd love to see that process. Cool. Okay. Right. Well, I'll start off then with the healing tool. So how I use that. So I'm just going to move, minimize that and put it over there. Okay. So this picture was taken at one of my local deer parks um it was um of a stag and i absolutely loved it but then when i when i go to edit it i notice that i have all you know all the uh, um ferns and um sticks and all sorts just in the way and i just it annoys me so um i use the healing tool a lot I, there, there was one particular photograph i was going to use but i used it on another stream a while ago um with the deer actually in the photograph and i actually managed to get rid of it by using the um <laughs> the healing tool so um yeah, that I use it predominantly to just get rid of other subjects in, but it's great to just touch up and get rid of some of the distractions in the in the photograph. So, um, at first, I'm going to I'm going to edit it from um, scratch and then apply the healing um, tools to it. So I'm going to add my preset onto it, um, which is the moody tones one. So my images as well i've gone my style changes all the time so one minute i like bright photographs then i like really nude photographs and at the moment i'm, I'm really liking like uh, the soft sort of yellows and oranges and sort of like the softer glow so to create that softer glow i apply um clarity a lot uh, well i don't apply the clarity sorry I, I lessen the clarity so it gives that softer look to it so for this particular image it it, it kind of looks all right but for some for some photographs it looks a bit too sort of soft. So you have to just, uh, um, I just um, uh, manually adjust it. Um, but I don't think it's too bad on that one. Um, so I'm just gonna go to the, the, where's the radial, no, so that's mask insight. Not the mask, the heel. Um, so an, an update as well, which is really great in Lightroom recently is they've added the content aware removal tool which is which is a lot easier now um because before it was just the clone and the heel whereas now it's mm. got this like really cool awareness so it sort of matches it you know pretty pretty good um and it has a refresh button as well if it doesn't quite capture it you can refresh in it'll find another part of the image so um yeah it's quite i, I really like this update so yeah just, so yeah it's great so just got rid of that yeah, all of the Lightroom updates have been such a game changer. They like mm. really, really change the editing flow. Yeah, um, I love some of the masking tools as well that have come mm -hmm. in um, to it. So, um, I'm going to try not to um, put too much remove a tool on because my computer, for some reason, doesn't like it. When I go, when I put too much on it, it sort of freaks out and it's like, oh, what are you, what are you doing? So I'm just, yeah. gonna go, but I'm just going to go easy on it. Um, How long do you usually spend uh, editing an image, like when you're not doing a live stream? <laughs> um, depends probably about 10 minutes um because obviously I do it on my phone so yeah. obviously using using my fingers it's just really quick um mm. yeah not as long on um not as long as a uh, computer yeah I can see how being working on the computer could be a lot longer of a process yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's kind of, that's that's why I love um you know Lightroom Mobile so much because it's so handy and obviously you can have it if you've got a tablet as well you can have it on there so I just have um like a pen um and then can just use that as well so it's it's, yeah. it's really it's really easy um yeah. 
I'm curious to know from the chat, how many of you work on uh, Lightroom mobile or Lightroom desktop? I'd love to know. So are you doing um, a lot of wildlife photography for clients or is this kind of just something that you do for fun or mix of both? Um, it's just, it's for fun. Um, okay. Yeah, I have, I have um, I'm fortunate to live on a river bank. So I get, you know, lots of squirrels and birds and kingfishers and ducks and everything. So um, yeah, I just take my camera out there and just sit out there for a while. Um, oh, and so yeah. Nice. It's, it is honestly amazing. So I just can sit, I can, the, the good thing, I mean, the good and the bad thing is wildlife photography requires a lot of patience because wildlife can't pose for you. <laughs> you have so to, true. It, it doesn't pose like a person can. You've just got to capture it. Um, and this, it actually goes perfectly into my next photograph because I went to photograph some barn owls at one of my local estuaries and the barn owls were hunting over the moors and it was great, but it was so fast. It was really hard to keep up with it, especially because you're so far away with your telephoto lens. And even though you've got the high shutter speed, you know, trying to move your camera around really quick, trying to capture the bird in flight and make sure you capture it was quite difficult. So I wanted to just show how I used the healing tool to just make this photograph a bit more central. So um yeah here i have a barn owl it just captured its um its meal for the day i think it was oh, a, wow. a vol a vol a field vol of some sort i think i'm, I'm not quite sure um but yeah it was really cool to, to see it hunting and then I actually capture its food so so cool so um yeah i'm just gonna show you how i use so i'm not gonna use the remover tool for this um i'm actually gonna use the heel tool because i want to i want to basically get the barn owl into the middle of this photograph um so because obviously when I captured the photograph it was it nearly went off it nearly went off it so I, I was fortunately you know I was captured it and it's great but I, I you know it would have been better if it was central so I'm just gonna make it more central by using the healing tool um so if I get the size um I'll make this a bit bigger and make sure the barn owl is in it there oh no sorry i did that the wrong way around sorry so i always forget to do this so i want it there so then i need to find the subject there there we go so just making sure that it's all sort of lined up okay Okay. So nice and easy with that blurred background. It's perfect. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, this is it. So if the background, if the background is, is similar, obviously it, it works really well. Um, it would probably be a bit more difficult with this image if the background wasn't as um, blurred as it was. Right. I'm just going to feather it a bit so it blends more. It's not as obvious. Um, okay. I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to crop it. Um, so for Instagram, obviously it's, um, you know, four by five portrait I like. So Oops. Okay. There we go. So obviously, yeah, it, I wouldn't have been able to get that really, that sort of shot at that sort of um, angle because the bird was so far at the end of the photograph. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it just wouldn't have looked right. So at least I've been able to move it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, edit this now. Oopsie, go away. Prompts. Oh, the prompts are doing nothing. Like moody tones. Go. Okay, so let's just bring that right down. Um. Noise. 
okay, so for this for this image now, I'd want to use the um, masking tool. So, um, so quite like so I I mean this I can go into the masking tools now. It actually flows quite well. So. Now, I, I when I have an image like this, when I'm taking a photograph of wildlife, I like them to always be in the center of the image. Um, and then I like to use the mask, it, the sort of linear gradients to sort of emphasize that. So it might be I bring in the light from the top and make the bottom dark. So it, it brings, it makes the eyes focus predominantly on the um, animal in, in, in the middle. So if I just, as an example, um let's go in gradient and then we'll just drag that down and i like to use <clears throat> the dehaze so mm. i love the dehaze tool it's my favorite <laughs> yeah it's the best i, I absolutely love it <laughs> um i will see on this whether i use the um the gradient at the bottom I'll just have a look. Um, I tend to darken the exposure a bit. But I'm not sure, actually. Um, and the great thing with the masking now is they have brought in the... Oh, sorry, I keep clicking off and on it. The um, select a subject. I, I absolutely love that. Like, that's, mm -hmm. amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. So if I, can, if I click select a subject, it will find the subject that's in focus. Um takes a little while. Yeah, select yeah. subject is just like unbelievable. I had a huge batch of images that I had to edit um like a week ago and they all had people in them and I was just trying to do a quick once over. And normally that would have taken me so long to get everyone like perfectly lightened up and looking good and select subject, mm -hmm. which is boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it takes ages this. It doesn't on the here we go. One moment. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's weird that it's taking there we so go. long. There we go. I think it's I think it's found it. I don't know why it's taking so long to find it when it's there in the middle of the screen. But anyway, um so what I will do is I would just sharpen this. Just a little, and maybe add a little bit of contrast. Maybe, and then brighten it up. Okay, so I think that image is done. So if I show a before, if it wants to play ball. Yeah, so it will, <laughs> it's not it's not there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's has it froze for you on that? No, um, just checking. It's still all working. Yeah, is it? We're back. We're there. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's just kind of lagging a little, like being a little slow okay let's go into some more masking photos um what is it is it not loading uh, oh there we go we're here hmm. well so that's weird. <laughs> so weird i think i just needed to double click um, so this photo, um, I, I've made, so somewhere on my drive, I've made this look completely different to the weather that it was. So by, by using the masking tool, I was able to change the mood of this image, um, just by using the linear gradient tool. So let's try and give that a go and see if I can, see if I can do that again. Um. So first off, I'm going to apply my preset, uh, my moody tones one. I'm 
okay and to artists too soft so so when you're editing do you often bring the clarity down is that kind of how you get that like dreamy moody look to your pictures yeah Okay. Cool. Yeah, I go. Yeah, I go through stages. So, as, as yeah, as mentioned, like sometimes I like really harsh colors, and then in the summer I sort of changed it again, and I was like, oh, do you know what? I quite like the soft and the soft glow to the photograph. So oh, I'm in that stage at the minute. <laughs> I quite yes. like the softy glow of things. I know. Yeah. I tend to do the same thing where I go through these phases of the way I edit our travel photos. And then I end up wanting to go back and re-edit everything and repost everything with my new style. And then I do it again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, I think because I know I know on Instagram, a lot of people say, oh, you know, well, whatever photographers, you should have a certain style um, because, it, you know, it sort of is you and whatever. But I think I think you can be quite bored like I, I mean I get bored of a style after a while and I do like to change things up and try different things so like my feed Absolutely. you know if people were to look through my Instagram feed you'd see that my style and everything changes so much over time just because I like to try something new and change it up you know so I love um, that I think that keeps it fresh and I love when people like kind of change it with the seasons like you mentioned yeah. too and like you know just kind of trying out new colors and new things and yeah it's fun yeah no i agree um just going to apply lordy haze so this i this photo here like i <laughs> i went to the lake district and i really wanted sort of moody dark conditions because that's kind of what i had in my head in terms of the photographs and um, that i wanted to capture but it, it was just sunny the whole time i was there so i was like oh but I was able to sort of manipulate the photographs a bit by applying the masking tools and um, the linear tool and, and stuff to sort of get that moody look. Um, so it just adds, it, it, to be honest, it looks, it makes it look a bit foggy. Mm. So um, where is the, let's apply, apply another one. Bring all the shadows. Um, right, go into chords. There we go. Um, okay, I'm still not. Okay, so this is just an example. So <clears throat> that was the original. Obviously, it was oh my sunny. god! Wow! And and then sort of make it <laughs> make it look like a completely different day. Oh my god, that's crazy! So that was just from like bringing up the brightness of that sky. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, put, putting in the masking tool, um, and then just completely so it changes the whole vibe of the image. So there, it was like sunny and warm, um, yeah. and then there it just looks like really cold and like you know it's been raining, wow. <laughs> but foggy. What um, a difference! Yeah, so, I, so cool. Yeah. Creating those sort of cinematic, dramatic looking photos by using them, I, yeah, just thought it was really great. And then um, with these as well. Um, so these were just some cute little house sparrows just jumping around this local pond eating eating some flies but I, I what when the background I didn't I just wasn't I wanted a more sort of glowy cinematic sort of look to the photograph so I'm going to use the masking tool again to bring in the light and and then the dark in the bottom so I'll just um, let's crop it down um, actually, might need 
everyone's very impressed with that change of weather. <laughs> Paco really? said, oh, yeah, Paco said a whole different picture. Nice trick. Oh, yeah, really cool. Okay. So, that's my preset. Um, and then linear gradient. So see where on the bird, um, it's got the light bouncing off the feathers there. So um, I want to make the light more dramatic um, from coming from this corner. So if I really lighten it up. Oops, wrong one. See what that looks like. Um, might go back to that in a minute. It looks a bit much. Might blend that a bit better in a minute. Um, let me just bring one from the bottom. Um, bring exposure down. What a difference already. Yeah. Um, again, it's just because I like to make the subject the main part, like the main focus of it. And the only way I do that is by using, obviously, the masking tools. So that was it before. And then that's after wow. so um what i'll do is now i might not click because i can you can do it with a brush i might I, I don't know where to click a subject in case it takes forever again <laughs> but we'll give it a go yeah um but yeah i just think it just makes it more dramatic if you're into that um kind of thing i i, I like that sort of dramatic cinematic sort of look uh, Absolutely. And it draws, you know, it draws your eye in, doesn't it, then? So if the background is sort of, you know, it's got loads of leaves and blurry leaves in the background, it takes that away, it takes your eyes away from that and just makes you solely focus on the um, subject. Yeah. Uh, it's really struggling with it, huh? So what would you say are your favourite um wildlife subjects to shoot uh what are my favorite wildlife subjects yeah um as in the animals yeah yeah the type of animal like birds or uh, i i love your highland cows too they're amazing <laughs> yeah well i think i think my absolute favorite is the puffins because mm. they're so charismatic and they love to pose. Uh, they they come right by your feet, um, so you can get really good photographs of them. And yeah, they, as I said, that they love to pose. So um, we also have um, like some red squirrels nearby um, in a forest. They're great to capture. Um, so cool. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. I would say everything, but um, the one thing that I really want to capture more than anything is badgers and foxes. They mm. are on the top of my list, so. Yes. Yes, we yeah. saw a beautiful red fox yesterday on a hike, just kind of like jumping and hunting. And I was like, I need my camera. <laughs> uh, I know. Well, um, I went I went for a walk a few months ago and there was a, there was a fox, well, two foxes in the distance, but I didn't have my camera and I couldn't with me, like, you know, on, on my shoulder or anything. So trying yeah. to get a photograph, it's, oh, it's always the way. Ah. <laughs> uh. I know. It's always those moments that happen. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, I might just bring the lights down a little bit. Okay, so that was before. Uh, and then that's after. So, yeah. Nice and dramatic. Um, yeah, again, the same for this one, so. It really makes you just appreciate the power of editing and the ability to be able to, you can take these photos that are beautiful on their own, but then just tell the full story through the editing. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know there's always argument to say, you know, you should edit a photograph, you know, so dramatic as you do whatever, but then I suppose it is, it is like a story, isn't it? It is. Um, and it's fun as well. Like, you take it's the whole the whole process for me, like going out and taking a photograph. When I see it, when I've taken that photograph and seen it in the back of my camera and it looks great through the viewfinder, I then get even more excited because I know what what it could potentially look like through editing. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And I just find that really fun. It's quite a fun little hobby. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Oliver said, I ticked off a badger, no fox yet. They're too quick for me. Said, uh, they're quite happy to stand and look at you until they move until you move the camera and then they're gone. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be an absolute dream to get. So you see these um wildlife photographers on Instagram that are like, you know, the sat amongst badger sets or whatever and they're all just there eating and they've got all these amazing photographs it's just wow that would be amazing yeah Um, Peter asked, what cameras do you use? Um, so I currently use the Sony a7 III with a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. That's basically what stays on my lens because, uh, on my camera, sorry, because I love to just capture. When I take photographs, I really love to like zoom in and capture capture like the zoomed in look I, I like that um that's, that's sort of a phase I'm going through at the minute so that stays on my camera a lot um and then obviously just in case you do see any wildlife you've got that um you know you've got the the 400 if you need to use it so. mm, yes and I also um use my iPhone so it, I've got the iPhone 14 Pro um so yeah, that's got obviously war on it and it's got like a, a good camera. So if I want to shoot anything wide, then I can just pull out my phone and um, use that. And then obviously you can just put it straight into Lightroom from your phone. So it just works really well. Yeah. And do you find the zoom to be decent on the iPhone 14 or like, would you say about the same as the other iPhone versions? Um, Probably about the same, I'd say. Okay. I, 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 yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it was amazing. I mean I would I only use it if I'm out, you know, doing landscapes and I want to get some landscape photographs or if I'm trying to test out some night photography and obviously it's got night mode on the on the phone. So you can just hold it still and it'll capture the night and the stars and stuff. So it's mainly if I'm trying to shoot something wider, um, because I don't have a wide um angle mm. um angle lens on my camera. So that's what I use basically. So cool. Um, I'm not going to use subject anymore. I'm going to use the book. <laughs> uh, Eric asked, do you stay out overnight for any of these wildlife photo shoots? No. <laughs> no. Um, I don't I'm, blame I'm bit, you. 
I'm a bit scared. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, if, if I was with a group of people, um, yes, I would. I would absolutely. So, you know, um, I work for a wildlife charity and a few of us have said, oh, why don't we stay out one night and camp out and, um, yeah, see if what we can find and stuff. It's yet to happen. But mm. I would never do it. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do it on my own. I'd, I'd be too scared. I'd have to do it with someone, I think. I know. I don't blame you. Um, I really want um, a camper van. Yes. I can yes. just stay in that <laughs> rather than yep. a tent or something. Yeah, that's what we do. It's the best. I highly recommend it. Okay, so that's before and after again. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, I'm pretty chuffed with that photograph as it is, and I would probably upload that as is, but, um, you know, to emphasise the subject, I mean, that's probably, that mass, uh, the gradient at the top is probably a bit too bright. I'd want to probably soften that, I think, a bit, a bit more. Add a bit more of it. Probably a bit too glowy, I think. Soften it a little bit, that's better. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's that's the healing tool and the masking tool. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna go through some, so f from what we've learned with the healing tool and the masking tool, I was gonna go through some photographs that I took in Iceland and see if we can apply them to them because I came, I came back from Iceland a few days ago, um, uh... and I haven't, I haven't had chance to edit any of my photographs yet. So I thought, well, why not do it on the live? So <laughs> that's perfect. How was Iceland this time of year? Is it freezing? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It absolutely freezing. So in the day, it was probably about minus four, but then the wind chill made it about minus seven, eight. Oh, my um, God. Yeah, it was absolutely freezing. And the thing was, I had all the, we had these tours planned and we were going on a south coast tour to see all the waterfalls and then the, the volcanoes and all that kind of stuff and the black sand beach. Um, but unfortunately, they got cancelled because there was a, a big snowstorm that came through. Oh, um, so we had to we had to cancel. It had, obviously had to be cancelled for safety reasons. Um, so that's a bit that was a bit gutting. But we saw the Northern Lights, um, oh, and amazing. I did get I did get a few photographs. So I was just going to go through and edit some of those using. Um, obviously, I, I looked at a couple of them, and there was. Um, I think my my camera needs cleaning because there's a lot <laughs> of dirt on the lens, <laughs> on the sensor especially. So <laughs> mm, yes, um, I need to use the healing tool for that. Um, quite a bit, I think. Why it's um, well, that's just loading. Are there any other, are there any other questions in the chat that anyone? Um, yeah, let us know if you, if any of you have any other questions so far. Yeah, I was in Iceland in September of not this past year, the year before, and then we're going again in June. But I've always wanted to go in the winter too, which is so beautiful. I love it. Honestly, like I, I've never been on a snowy holiday before. So just being out in the snow and, it, you know, it being really cold and like just, yeah, it, everywhere, it just looks so magical. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think next time I go, it would probably be more towards the summer months, I think, just so I can explore more of the island without the weather. <laughs> Definitely. Um, causing other problems. So let's take a look at so this was a drone shot in um, Reykjavik, which was is the main city there. So I'm just going to let's see how my preset would look on that. Okay, it's very blue. Warm up a bit, that's better. The highlights a bit. Um, 
Um, How many times do you get to see the Northern Lights when you were there? Only once. So on our first, when we first flew in um, that evening, we were meant to go on a tour to see them, but they were cancelled because uh. it was cloud. I mean, when we landed, it was really, it was heavy rain. And I was like, oh no, I've just left, my, I've just left Manchester and Manchester's known for raining. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've just left the rain and now I'm in the rain again. Um, but we got it got moved to the next day, um, which we had snow overnight, which was great. So we, we explored the city in the day and then went to the Northern Lights at night. Um, Do you get I mean, a good show? As, yeah, I mean, they weren't as strong as they probably, because I think the week before, um, it was like every single day they were on show uh, and they were dead bright and they were just amazing. Um, oh my God, but I mean, that would be so cool. Yeah, I mean, I saw them, so um, it was great. Um, I I always like imagine living there and what it must be like. They, they're probably so jaded by it. They're just like, yeah, whatever. Northern <laughs> Lights, another day and... I can't even imagine almost every single night, certain week, just like looking out your window and there they are. So cool. Oh, there's um, I can't remember her name now, but there's um, an Instagrammer and she basically would look out of her window and the Northern Lights were just there. Like she'd just open the curtains and they were there and just looked amazing. Wow. Just how lucky. <laughs> Did she live in Iceland? Yeah. I think she oh, lives so in um, Reykjavik, I think. Okay. So cool. Um, Robert asked if your camera is full format or APS-C. Um, so it's full frame. Yeah, okay. it's a full frame. It's um, A7 III is the cool. camera that I use. Um, how am I for time? For time? Mm -hmm. Um, You're good. I think we have like 40 minutes. Yeah, the new the new timing. I'm like, gotta make sure I'm thinking hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure that I've got some time for Adobe Express. Um... Oh. I'm just going to completely stay away from selecting the subject because it seems to make everything lag. So I'll just use a brush tool instead, <laughs> which, you know, does a sort of similar job. So, yeah, still works fairly well. trying to just obviously that's the focus of the image so I just want to make it stand out that bit more um, Robert says they say APS-C is better for nature photography Robert do you know why that is let yeah, us know yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know why. And Eric says, Iceland is so cool. I totally agree, Eric. It's the best. It's somewhere yeah. I would definitely consider moving, but I for sure would miss the trees too much. I would miss like oh, all Oh yes. I said this because when we were there, I was getting so excited because it was all snowy and it just everybody was so chilled and everyone's so nice and I was just like Do you know what I could really live here it just it's really nice chilled lifestyle but then it was like well yeah it's quite flat the only yep. native species is the arctic fox yep and it's I, like, oh, I think I miss everything I know me too I would for sure miss the feel of like being in the woods you don't get that in Iceland <laughs> no <laughs> no no um, 
yeah there wasn't many trees around it was just i mean don't get me wrong it's absolutely beautiful but um yeah yeah i've missed the squirrels and like the little robins and I know. whatever else you know just running past i know past. Um, yeah i don't think i'd be able to handle the winters either like we get fairly brutal winters some years here uh on the east coast but luckily like it's been pretty mild this year so <laughs> oh yeah we had um we had a spell in december where it was like i think in the day it was ridiculous it was like minus five minus seven something like that for about a week and we've not had We've not had anything since. It's just been quite mild. We were, we were saying today, like, we stepped outside and you were just sort of one consistent temperature because it just was really warm. Yeah. Um, this is a bit hard to edit because everything in it is the same sort of colour. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. What I want to do, do you think it's that? Um... I'll bring that down a little or not. I don't know. So this is the thing as well. When I'm editing something like this, I could spend a lot longer on this because I'm just not sure how to edit it. And then I'll be like, right, I can't edit this one. And then I'll move on to another one. <laughs> I know, I know. I experienced the same exact thing. But oh, it's not going how I want it to go, and then you have to just put it down and then edit something else or go and do something else. Yep. And then the photo forever just sits on the hard drive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. cool, great. Never did anything with that. Like all of our Iceland photos, so many of them are still just sitting. We were traveling all last summer those are all sitting and I just get so lazy I'm like eh, I'm not gonna edit them yeah. <laughs> yeah but then also I've noticed with myself as well like once I've changed so when I go through the phase of this like certain style or whatever it might um, you know it, I might not be able to edit it to that style but then once I've changed it and gone onto like a sort of different style I'll go back to that photo and it'll work and I'm like oh well I took that like three years ago but it worked yeah a hundred percent <laughs> oh my, let's just Yeah, so apparently this, I, I can't remember what it was called now, but this was this was once a volcano um, and it fell into itself and now yeah. there's this pool of water. I um, think that's Carid Crater, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think you're right. And they don't know why. They don't know why this fills up with water. They still they still can't quite understand why, why it does and where it comes from. Yeah, it's so cool. I mean, I can imagine in the summer this will look amazing because some photographs I've seen, it's like, you know, really like Caribbean blue. It is. It's very cool. And then all the rock around it is red. So it's like a really strong contrast. Oh, cool. Were any of the volcanoes erupting when you were there? No. No, so I was only there, I think, how long were we there for? And all about three or four days. So we just went on like a long weekend trip, really. Mm, nice. Um, as like a taster. So, but I mean, I, I'm itching to go back already. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to go back. Um, yeah. I, I know the one volcano that's like towards Reykjavik um, started erupting again, like a few months ago after it was dormant for a little while. And then uh it started up again and then stopped and so i hadn't kind of kept track of what was going on with it and was hoping oh, right, it okay. yeah no because th there was um was it not last year was it the year before there was a, one that erupted and mm -hmm. i can't remember which one it was um i saw it all over instagram basically <laughs> yeah yeah that was the same one that like went 
dormant for a while and then uh, decided to erupt again. Uh, Fagra Dalsvik. I don't know if that's exactly how you pronounce it, but that one, we got to see it and it was so cool. It was just like lava just going all over and for so many miles. Did you get to go, you know, sort of close enough to feel the heat off it? Oh, yeah. Like you could... They were not patrolling it at all. It was so crazy. And you could go up and just like walk right up to the lava. And people were roasting marshmallows and hot dogs. And we kind of stood no. back because the gas was so strong that it immediately burned your nose. And But you could, you could feel the heat and you get back a certain distance and then you're freezing cold from the wind and everything. And then you warm up by the lava. <laughs> like never thought I would be warming up by lava. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Yeah, because we went to uh, this this that I'm editing now. Did you uh, did you go and see the secret lagoon? Um no, it was on our list, but we never got there. Yeah, so this was the secret lagoon, was obviously they have like the hot like the boiling hot springs around it that you can't touch or anything, you know. Um and they were they kept erupting like every I think it was every seven minutes. Oh wow. Um, which was quite cool. But they were absolutely they were like what you could feel the heat just stood just stood away yeah. from them. It was it was cool. Oh, so awesome. It's such a it is honestly such a cool place. Like it's very interesting. It's got really interesting history as well. It really does. Um, oh, hold on, I'm in, the, I'm in the wrong thing here. I want you moved. Um, why are you just analyzing and not doing it? We started a whole discussion in the chat about full frame versus the crop frame. It's way over my head. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I pulled up the chat at the side just so I could have a quick look. But and I like um, Rin, Rin's comment um, from his yes. dad saying, at the end of the day, the best camera is the one you have. I love that. That's such a nice saying. Yes, me too. I've heard that a couple times and it's so, so true. I I completely agree. And whether it's whether you're capturing something for um, the final photo that you know you're going to create, whether it be for yourself or for work mm. or, or, or for social media or whatever, or if you're just doing it to capture memory, it's if you have a camera on you, whether it be your phone or a point and shoot or a disposable or film or beautiful full frame DSLR, like whatever, as long as you're enjoying that moment, right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I start, I started to, when I started out with photography, I was just using my iPhone 8. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. have a fancy camera. I didn't have anything like that. I just remember I was going out on these trips and I was using my phone camera and I was like, oh, do you know what? I really, really like this. And then I was, then I found out about Lightroom. So then I started to, um, the, you know, sort of the free, the free version. I was just uploading photographs to it and I was just editing it and tweaking it. And I was like, oh, no, I really, this is really, you know, cool. I like doing this. And that's how it started really. And then, you know, over time I just saved up money um, and got and then obviously invested in a camera, a, you know, a better camera with a with a, a lens and stuff like that. But if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't for wildlife um, photography as such, where I like to get, you know, the really crisp images of them really close up, yeah, I'd probably just stick. With, I'd probably just stick with my phone if I'm honest. Totally, 
I know. I've I've reverted back to just kind of using my phone for most things. And because a lot of times it's like just for the memory and for saving that. And that becomes almost like a a visual journal in a way. So, yeah, I'm like, phone is good for me. Yeah. So I think I think the remove tool. Oh no, it's working. It likes to analyze every time I click. Mm, <laughs> Whereas so the heel, the, yeah, the heel tool will just. Uh, but obviously it's snow, so it's all going to look the same. So <laughs> we'll just go with the heel tool. And get rid of the footprints. So this this bird, I believe, after doing some googling, is a, a widgeon. A widgeon? Don't know. I, I, it might be. Ah. I think oh, I've never seen one before until Iceland. Cool. So. I like the look of like really isolating that guy. Yeah, it's just on his <laughs> on his own. Um... see actually because it's so bright I can't quite see whether I've captured everything it's from the visual spot So where is one of your favorite places that you photographed? Scotland. Definitely uh, Scotland. Yes. <laughs> yeah, love absolutely love it there. Mm-hmm. Um I think had I had I gone on the the south coast tour with Iceland, I think it would have been Iceland. Mm. Um, but because I didn't, Scotland still sits firmly at the top. Yes. It's I so, know. especially the Highlands. It's really, it's a really dramatic, and um, the Isle of Skye as well is, is ah. just stunning. Yes, the Isle of Skye has my heart. Okay. Yeah. Did you go? Did you go? Um, is it the old? Is the old man's door? Yes. Yes. Did you walk up there? Yeah, we. I actually. So my brother and my husband walked all the way to the top, and we were. We told them we're like, okay, don't go all the way up to the top because we need to keep going. We had like a couple hours of sunlight to try to make our way fully around, and we were with my family too, and and so we're like, just go a little ways, like take some photos, have fun, and then come back down. And they ended up being gone for like four hours, and my mom and I started trying to <laughs> hike up to meet them, and we were both like, this is exhausting we need to go back and- <laughs> it's honestly it's so it, that's so true because when when I went we were climbing up and I, I thought oh god it's you know from the road you just like oh, it's only there it'll only yeah. take a few, few half an hour maybe an hour at most it'll be fine yeah I got literally halfway up there and I was like I can't do this anymore and then we still had another hour or two to go and I was like I don't think I can do this like I am not physically fit enough yep exactly I know we were cracking up I was like it does it doesn't even look like it's that far it's right there <laughs> it's really 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 deceiving and it, and the funny the funniest thing was when 
we'd done it. We'd probably been up there about five hours. We didn't even manage to get to the top as well because the wind was so intense. We're like, yeah, I can't, I can't breathe. So I know. After, after we were like, right, let's just let's just go back down and we've, we've we've seen it. We've been around it now. Let's just go. Yeah. And the people we were walking past people walking up that were going, oh my goodness, like how far have we got left? And it was like you've probably still got another two hours. I know it's so. Go so deceiving it's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah it was so beautiful though i i have seen so many uh, incredible pictures up there from like sunset or at night with the stars and i'm like man i give those people props because i guess if you're prepared and you know you're going on like a proper hike then it would be okay but i thought it was just a stroll out of the car <laughs> well yeah and again you know on Instagram it just makes it look so easy totally um but obviously you know I mean at the time we were carrying backpacks with drones in with about three lenses in and the camera and water and food and but you know and everything all sat on the back going uphill so it was like geez this is this is intense I'm not I'm not built for this I know I know it's so true Okay, right. So I've I've edited some photographs from Iceland now, but I wanted I just wanted to make sure that I had some time to um, go into Adobe Express just to show how I use it. Really, you know, because um, I might shut. I don't know if I shut down Lightroom now, so I might save a bit of. Uh, yeah, I'll shut it down because I want to be able to go fully into this without any lagging. Hmm. So I use Adobe Express to create my Instagram reel covers um, because obviously I want to develop reels and and use reels more as that seems to be what social media are pushing these days, a video. So um, a lot of people use Canva and and, um, others, things like that. But I find Adobe Express is just exactly the same and works just exactly the same. Um, And it's easy to, you know, when you're using Lightroom or Photoshop, it's just easy with your workflow and everything. So... Um, if you've not used it before Adobe Express, then definitely, you know, have a look at it because there's all different templates you can use. Um, you can add your brand into it. You, there's a new schedule tool in it now where you can actually schedule your posts in and it'll just post it for you. Um, there's lots That's of things amazing. you can do. Yeah. Um, there's lots of things you can do with um, image it. Uh, video as well so you can trim video you can resize it you can convert them to gifs you can crop them so if you can actually create your instagram reels or your tiktoks or whatever in adobe express um so you can all just do it in one in one place really so it's quite handy wow Um, yeah you've got all the templates from book covers to flyers to logos um to invitations to everything really or you can customize it so um you have your projects uh, and I have, I just have a few there that I've used, you know, if I've been doing any work for any specific brand um, and they've wanted a cover photo, obviously I've created it there in um, Adobe Express. If I want to create carousel images, I've got like the three, the three photographs, you can also edit it in Adobe Express and then real covers. So I'm just going to quickly, while I've still got some time, um, just create a couple so um, when you go to create new you've, you've got all these I mean there's just so much you can do on it now <laughs> from when I first used it a few years ago um, yeah wow but yeah I had no I'm idea gonna, there's so much I mean you can even create web pages as well and oh my god collages it yeah it's, it's really cool so anyway I'm gonna start with an instagram story template because it's um 16 by 9 9 by 16 which is the instagram sort of on and sort of tiktok um aspect ratio so i'm gonna use that as a starter um and again at the side here you've got templates that you can use that you can manipulate and and change and, and make into your own if you want to or you can just start from a blank canvas which I'm going to do Um, because I want to add a photograph. So um, if I go into photos, 
Um, they have free photographs as well that you can use. And then obviously if you're a premium, you can use premium ones. So if we go to upload to photo, um, I am going to use the dear one that I created earlier. And then if I click on that, you get lots of um, editing um, tools that you can use. You can blur the image, you can use a filter, you can use the enhancements and contrasts and highlights and all that carry on. But obviously I've already edited this image, so I don't need to re-edit it. So I'm going to click add to background and it should just blow it up there, which is perfect. Um, and then um, I want to add some text. So say I was creating an Instagram reel for how to use the um, healing tool. So like we've discussed today, if I wanted to speed up the process, do a really quick video that was about 10 seconds long, was, uh, sped up showing how I use the healing tool on a, on a um, photograph. Um, obviously I want to draw people to that reel. So I want to add some text um, to show people what the reel's about, to tell them what it's about. So if I had some text, they have got lots of um you know templates that you could use here if you wanted to or you can add your own so i'm just going to add my own so um what can we say um learn how to use um healing tool learn how to use the healing tool let's we'll start Um, and obviously you can change text color. So it sort of, um, it creates a color palette based on your image, or if you wanted to, you can use the um, eyedropper tool. And if I wanted to choose a color that was within my current image to see how, how that would look. So that's too dark, that doesn't work. So I might go for, again, that doesn't work. Might go for something if there's a white, if I can find a white, it's not so blue. In here, maybe I can't. Um, let's try the chest. No, so that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go just for white, I think. And make it stand out. Mm. Um, and then they have lots of font recommendations as well, which I think is quite cool. Um, there's so much you can do on here now. It's it's amazing. It's it's really it's really changed. It's got lots and it's definitely up there. Um, so where was it? Highlights. Where was it? one in here? Um, don't want an outline. A black shadow to it. Stands out a bit more. Okay, so there's quite there's cool things like this. So you can highlight words as well. So um, obviously you could drag it. You can drag it down so it's all highlighted, or you could just have healing tool highlighted. Um, so cool it really is like way more advanced than canva yeah I, I, it's great um if i add some more text in in lightroom Have you found that your reels perform any better with like these type of cover photos with the text on them? Um, yeah, because 
this sort of you know people just the sort of like world we live in where people just want something quick yeah if they can go onto your feed and they go onto your reels and they just see what they want to see so it's like tiktok as well like on tiktok you can choose a cover photo can't you you can put stickers over the top so i don't think you can't do that in lightroom you can uh, sorry lightroom in instagram you can only choose your cover photo based on what your video is so if you don't have any wording within your um reel right people won't know necessarily what your reel is about whereas with tiktok you can upload your video and then you create the cover photo separately with stickers so you can put a big sticker over the top saying you know this is how i edit this photo in lightroom and and people know exactly what it is when they go onto your page so Uh, true yeah whereas with with instagram reels it's it's not like that so i find making making your own sort of tiktok equivalent of the sticker in adobe express sort of works better um, yeah. to overcome that until obviously instagram if they're still competing with tiktok um which they, i think they kind of are um if they have an update where you could actually create a sticker on the reel that would be great but um i think i, I think it was with tiktok though you're a bit limited on the stickers and what you can put over the top whereas with this if you've got a brand or a certain font you, you like to use or colors you like to use you, you can actually make it your own through adobe express Whereas with TikTok, yes. you're just limited, aren't you, to what they provide? So, such a good point. Um, so that's sort of something you could. I mean, you could obviously jazz that up. I could spend ages <laughs> trying to sort of uh, make that look um, a bit jazzier. But I mean, that's how you can sort of use it for that um, particular one. Um, have I got time to create another one? Yes. So we have uh, like 15 minutes. So this was another one sort of similar that I, I did earlier. Um, and again, it just shows you like learn how to use a healing tool in Lightroom and a different font. Um, so I thought that was quite cool. Yeah, that's nice. Um, okay, so let's... where did it from your photo in it? Instagram story? Um, okay. Does it do any sort of animated stuff or is it all static? Um, yeah, I mean, I've not actually tried their animation. Um, let me just move this to the background. Animation. Um, let's have a go. I haven't tried it, but that's what we, we could see what ha- Oh, wow. Oh, hmm, that's cool. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. The pan. Okay, so that could be good for stories, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we we could potentially use that in this edit, the grey version. Suggested colours. I I do like the blur. So sometimes as well, if you if your photograph is a bit, um, but you know there's a lot of stuff going on and you want to put text over the top, sometimes find putting a blur on. Um, I'll show you now actually. Can help stand the text. The text can stand out better basically. Mm. So if we go to blur. So obviously you can go all the way and you can't see the photo at all. <laughs> if we go to there and then add some text. Um Using um, let's just
Oops. Nope. Masking tools? Nope. Masking tools. I definitely am inspired to use this now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's so handy, and as well, it has a it has a mobile app, so you can do it on your phone as well. So you don't have to do it on the computer. Yeah. And again, we wanted to highlight your. I don't want that color. Oh gosh, no, I don't want that. <laughs> um, actually, I don't want an outline on. Know why it always automatically gives you that yellow color yeah that's weird actually i don't like that let's just go for white with a nope i don't like that either that's all uh shadow off Why have you done that? <coughs> Use me. <laughs> no, I'm just not liking that outline. I'm just not liking it. be so easy to spend so much time using adobe express i would definitely get sucked into it yeah i mean yeah <laughs> I, can <honestly laughs> spend, I could spend ages. i'm not happy with that and i want to change it again and it's like yeah yeah for the purpose of this you can kind of see you know if say for example you wanted that down there um down there like that um obviously you need to change the colors and everything because it's but if the photograph wasn't blurred let's turn the blur off it just it yeah that the blur makes the the writing stand out a bit better mm, yeah um, definitely. and obviously the blur, I think, creates a little bit of a mystery around what the image is. So then people are probably more likely to click into it because they'll think, oh, what is that? So true. Um, but yeah, so... Um, There's many more questions in the chat. Yeah, let us know if anybody has any more questions as we start to wrap things up here. And um, don't forget, if you want to submit yourself or a friend to be here on Adobe Live, you can click on the guest recommendations tab over on uh, the little chat bar on Behance and recommend someone if you want to see them featured here. And it's really fun. Like I can say as a guest, previous guest, uh, I love being on here. Rachel, what do you think? You think it's a uh, lot of fun? Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice actually to, you know, when you see the chat and, you know, people are like, oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't see that. Oh, that's great advice. Thanks. It, 
it makes it all worthwhile because then if if one person takes away something from this that they didn't know before then that makes me feel good absolutely I could not agree more um Annika asked if we could possibly demonstrate how to export these covers from Adobe Express Mm -hmm. okay um, so let me go to project right. text. Um, so perhaps we can demonstrate how we can export these covers. Okay, so okay, so we just download, um, and then obviously you can download it as a PNG or a JPEG. Um, I would probably just stick with JPEG, to be honest, or, or PNG. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then start the download. And then I what is let me see show in folder. So um so it's two what is it, two megabytes. So uh from from here, um to get it onto my phone, I'd either just email it myself because it's only two megabytes or I'd put it into you know a local drive google drive what have you or we transfer it to my phone or whatever um and then um save it onto my phone so then when I do my reel and it asks for the cover photo um I can just pick it up straight from my phone library um yeah just a quick simple download really it's the faffy bit comes once you've downloaded it and then it's like well how do I get it to my phone but I mean if you've got a, a you know a a drive um um iCloud or we transfer whatever yeah or just email email it to yourself if it's if it's not a big file because this one is only two megabytes so that's yeah, perfect email it to myself um, yeah nice and easy but as well um adobe express so when you save it you can either do that but then obviously your projects um are saved so then if you have the app on your phone, you can go into your projects through the app and then download it straight to your phone that way, um, which probably would be an easier way if you had the if you have the app. You can just download it straight to your phone that way rather than either emailing it to yourself or what have you. Perfect. Um, that was really nice one. Well, cool. so we have um, about four minutes left. Um, any last questions for Rachel? Let us know in the chat. Finish up with the puffins. Yeah. So what I really want to do is I haven't I haven't really managed to look at the footage of my trip to Skomer Island because a bit like a bit like yourself, you just you get back. You may upload the footage, you might not, but then you don't look at it again for months. Yep. So, obviously, I went in June last year, and I still haven't been able to really look. And I got so much footage of them, just, you know, wandering about and coming up to the camera. Um, but I really want to start creating some reels um, of that. So then I could, I could obviously, I'll create the the real cover in yeah. Adobe Express and. Um, Rin said, I want to utilize more social for photo and stuff, but I have too much anxiety over people seeing my projects and judging them. How do you get over that? Mm, yeah, that's, that's a big one. Yeah. I, I suffered with this for a very, very long time. And I've got to a point now where so social media is for you. You post what you want not what others want unless obviously you are creating for a client that have put a brief together um and then you will obviously have to you know create content based off that brief and stuff but for social for social media purposes that's your it's your account it's your work if you love it post it you know it's it's your it's your place it's your um it's your photography journey it's your portfolio if, if don't ever worry about what someone thinks because I've lived like that for, for, for a very long time. But if you love your work, then just post it. And people people will see that and feel that from, from your social media accounts. And if you show more of your personality and more of who you are and more of your work through your social media accounts, then people are more likely to follow you um, and engage with your work and stuff. So 
honestly don't worry about people judging you it's probably it's probably not the case people probably love your work um it's just that i can i fully relate but you just have to remember to just post for you it's your account it's your work if you like it post it don't worry about what anyone else thinks i love it that's so perfect such wonderful advice and a perfect way to wrap everything up today Thank you so much for everyone to everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Rachel, for being here. It was really wonderful learning from okay. you and working with you. Um, don't forget to join Design Fix with Alex L- Lazarus coming up next, where he will design a logo and collateral system for a vintage Persian rug seller. So that should be super cool. Stay tuned for that. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay in touch with everything that's going on here at Adobe Live. Thank you so much, everyone, and we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.